A lot of people are quite nervous about anything cardiac, and that's understandable. If something goes wrong with the heart, then the consequences can be fairly catastrophic. However, the basics of blood pressure are actually fairly easy, as almost everything can be described with one simple equation. Cardiac output times vascular resistance equals blood pressure. This video will hopefully provide a simple model for understanding blood pressure dynamics. Cardiac output of course refers to the work the heart does pumping blood out into the body. Here to represent cardiac output and the heart we have an old fashioned hand driven water pump. The working of the handle represents the contractions of the heart, the water coming out of the nozzle represents blood ejected during these contractions. If we want to increase the flow of water from the pump, e.g. cardiac output, then there are two main things we can do. The first thing is to increase the volume of water being pushed out of the pump with each push of the handle. And as we can see, if our stick figure puts a bit more effort in, then voila, a greater volume of water is ejected. The heart works in a similar way. The volume of blood ejected from the heart with each contraction of the muscle is referred to as stroke volume. A couple of things affect stroke volume. Between contractions, the chamber of the heart fills with blood. As the ventricles fill, the muscle is stretched in order to hold a greater volume. The amount the muscle stretches before contraction is known as preload. This will be discussed in the next video. The more blood within the heart before contraction, the greater the stroke volume. The other thing that affects stroke volume is the force of contraction of the cardiac muscle. It is this contraction of muscle that forces the blood out from the heart. As we saw with our stick figure, the harder the muscle works, the greater the stroke volume. So if increasing stroke volume is the first thing we can do to improve cardiac output, then what's the second? The rate at which our stick figure works the handle will of course affect the volume of water pumped. The greater the rate, the greater the overall output. The heart is of course the same, up to a point. As we saw previously, the heart must fill with blood prior to contraction to achieve a reasonable stroke volume. If it beats too rapidly, then there will not be time for adequate filling to occur and the volume of blood ejected will be lower. Overall cardiac output will therefore be reduced. The second and equally important part to the blood pressure equation is the vascular resistance. This pump is pushing fluid through a nozzle. As the nozzle is wide, it provides very little resistance as the water is pushed through it. As a result, the water comes out of the end at very low pressure. This second pump is pushing the same volume of water at the same rate, but through a much thinner nozzle. This time, the water is coming out of the end at much higher pressure. The thin nozzle provides much more resistance to the large volume of water that is being pushed through it. Blood vessels in the body increase or reduce blood pressure in the same way. They are capable of constricting, increasing resistance to the blood being pushed out of the heart and producing higher pressures. They can also dilate, providing less resistance and reducing blood pressure. This stick figure is holding a hose pipe to represent vascular resistance. We can switch between a wide hose, producing very little resistance and therefore reducing blood pressure, or a narrow one increasing resistance and therefore blood pressure. And that's really it for blood pressure basics. Anything that increases or decreases blood pressure is going to fit in somewhere within this equation. We can increase cardiac output by increasing the stroke volume and the rate. We can then increase pressure even further by increasing resistance to cardiac output from the blood vessels. If we have a sudden shock, then the body's fight or flight response kicks in. As part of that response, the body is flooded with adrenaline. Adrenaline binds with special receptors on the heart muscle, which causes the muscle to contract more forcefully, increasing stroke volume and causing the heart rate to increase. As a result, cardiac output increases, leading to higher blood pressure. One of the symptoms of acute sepsis is widespread vasodilation. Vasodilation is helpful when an infection occurs in just one area of the body. For example, if you have an infected finger, 
then vasodilation within that finger allows more white cells into the area to help combat the infection. However, when the infection spreads to other parts of the body, then vasodilation will also become widespread. This will significantly reduce resistance to cardiac output and lead to a significant drop in blood pressure. I hope you found this video useful. In the next one, we'll look at giving fluids for hypertension. Don't forget to subscribe.